Hey, so I just released a bunch of new prints in my store. Um, I'll include the link uh, in, the, in the comments below. Um, each of these images is produced um, using uh, neural networks. Um, so we're going to use two different neural networks. We're going to use StyleGAN, which will be to create the images. Um, and then we'll also use uh, something called Super Resolution using an application called Gigapixel AI. So I thought I'd quickly walk through uh, how we're going to go about making these. Um, so, before we get started, you're going to want to download these two applications. Uh, the first one is called Runway. You can download it at runwayml.com. Um, I'll show you how we use this, but basically this will help us um, generate images and sort of explore the uh, space within StyleGAN. And then the second one is called Gigapixel AI. Um, I believe this is $100. It's a standalone app, um, but I think there's a 30-day trial. So you can go ahead and play with it and see what you think. Cool, let's get started. Um, so, within Runway, um, I've sort of talked about how I go about making these in a previous video, um, which I'll add a link to as well. Um, but basically, once you open Runway, you've got uh, models and then you've got workspaces. Um, so within the models, um, I have a custom model built, built around StyleGAN. Um, this basically gives me a way to um, add my own custom trained pickle files. Um, you'll see here that I've got a couple here. Um, so we're going to use the one called uh, Curtis128. Um, so the way this works is once you're in Runway, um, you can add this to Workspace. So I'm going to go ahead and add this. Um, and again, when you install Runway for the first time, um, you'll have, I believe, $10 of credits. Um, the way the, run <clears throat> excuse me, the way Runway works is that you can um, load these models in. When you hit Run Remotely, um, it's basically going to call to a server. Um, you pay by the minute using Runway, so I believe it's five cents a minute. Um, when this is running, it's gonna it's gonna take a little bit of time to get set up. Um, once you have it set up, though, you can then use your input, um, which we're gonna use a vector input. And these usually take a little bit of time to to start up. Um, the way StyleGAN works and the way that Runway works within StyleGAN is it's gonna generate a grid of images. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take those images out and then we're gonna run them through. Gigapixel to operize them. Um, so you'll notice that I'm using, actually this is the wrong model to use. So let me actually stop this. Um, I want to use the Curtis 128, so I've got another one that's a 512 output, um, 512 by 512 pixels, and I've got another one that's 128 by 128. I want to use the 128 by 128, and I'll show you why. Um, for me, it's a little bit of, uh, this is sort of the artistic side of things, which is like, if you use 128s, um, you can uh, you're sort of up from a very small image and it's going to create almost like a painterly effect. If you do it from the 512, um, you're going to get something that's a little bit more like accurate to the 512. Um, and again, this is just a personal preference. Um, I'll show some images later at the end of like where I've done some in 512 and I've done others in 128. Um, but yeah, this is uh, basically the way it works. So you start this model up again. Um, you have to pick your checkpoint before you run the model. Um, so I, was, I had to stop it there and then rerun it. And now that it's running, you'll see here that it's generating a grid of images. Um, and all these images are the latent space of StyleGAN, which if you're not familiar with the latent space, um, I've talked about it in a previous video, but basically StyleGAN's output is a space of a bunch of images. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to export a bunch of these. Um, and the way that Runway's export option works is when you click on export, you've got a couple options here. You've got text, you've got video, and you've got image directory. Um, now I want an image directory. Um, and the way that these, the way that I, it's sort of something I had to learn with Runway is the way that this works is that you hit export and then you start clicking around and you can generate a bunch of images um, and then you want to say stop when you're done exporting. Um, previously I'd done something where I like exported, stopped, exported, grabbed an image, stopped, and it led to like a million folders of like single images. Um, but I found that generally works best is like if you just hit export once and then you just start clicking around and grabbing images. So now that I'm in this space, um, I can just start grabbing images. And this is sort of what's really great about Runway is that it gives you this space to actually look at. Um, whereas otherwise, if you were running StyleGAM like on its own server, you would have to like basically generate a bunch of random images. You wouldn't really be able to check them out. Um, so every time you click, you'll get a little blue uh, highlight around the box. That's basically saving it, saving the image. Um, so you might generate a bunch that like you don't want, or like you'll accidentally click on something and then you'll get an extra image. It's fine. It's not the end of the world. Um, so I'm just going to quickly go in here and just click on a couple of these. And you'll notice that as you click around, like the space gets a little, uh, you'll, new images get generated, which is really nice. 
So we got this one. That one. And you'll notice that like as you move around now, like you're sort of seeing images that are semi semi related to each other. Like I'm starting to notice like I'm getting some purples, I'm getting some pinks. some red images. So this seems good. I'm just going to stop the export now. Um, and then that little pop-up opens. And this is where you want to like click on it really quickly to make sure that you can open up that file. So now in here, I've got a bunch of images. Uh, and if you inspect these, you'll notice that each of them is 128 by 128. So that's perfect for what we need. Um, now, for me personally, like what I like to do is um, I like to open these in Photoshop and clean them up a little bit. Uh, because the way I trained them is I trained them on some images that are a little messy. Um, so if I go in here, you'll sort of see like we've got some coloring issues here. Um, we've got some other things going on. So I'm going to really quickly clean this up. Um, I'm just going to select this color. Um, and I'm going to set the tolerance to this a little bit lower. And the reason that you want to clean these up beforehand um, is once you get into Gigapixel, um, it's going to start rising up a lot of these like little details, right? So um, each of these little pieces here, um, each of these single little pixel deals are going to get blown up um, really big into uh, when we put them through the, the up res. So it's really important that you like kind of make this as clean as you want. Um, I've sort of just learned from experimentation about what I sort of like want an image to look like and what I think uh, the resolution will look like when it actually gets put through the super resolution, resolution model. So I'm going to quickly bring this up a little bit more. That size is a bit smaller. Okay, that seems good. Um, so I'm going to save this save it back to where it was. Um, and now the next thing I want to do is um, I'm going to open up Gigapixel. So Gigapixel is a standalone app, just like Runway. Um, when you open it, you're going to be asked for an image that you want to give it. Head over here. This is the image I want. Um, so when you open it, <clears throat> you're going to have a bunch of options over here. It's going to ask, ask if you want to resize by a certain uh, percentage if you want to uh, resize by width or height, um, and then a bunch of settings here. Uh, I personally have found that for the effect that I want, I'll generally do a bunch of iterations on 2x images. Um, so if I jump directly to 6x, um, you'll get a very different look. Um, and there's a preview pane down here as well. Um, so generally what I like to do is I like to do 2x, and then I do it again, and then I do it again, and then I do it again until I get a really large image. Um, which for me, it's just it's the sort of the look I want. Um, so within the settings here, there is a thing called suppress noise, remove blur, um, and then a face refinement feature, which they just released. Um, I should talk a little bit about what super resolution models are. Um, so super resolutions are a GAN, um, and their input is a very small image, and their output is hopefully a larger image. Um, so the way these are traditionally trained is that you have a bunch of high res uh, photographic images you crop them and then you, then you down res them um, so you get the, the smaller resolutions, right? So that makes sense because what you're doing is you're taking the high res thing um, and you're using that as like sort of your, your, your output or what you would like it to, to get and then you down res it, right? So this is a way of where, because you have that model of a high resolution to a low resolution, you can then generalize that and then apply it to any type of image and go from low res to high res, um, which is a really helpful uh, process. Um, so Gigapixel, like I don't know exactly what it's trained on. Um, from what I understand, it's probably trained on a lot of uh, really high high res photographic images. Um, so uh, the way this works now is now that I've got a two X. I'm going to go in here and play with some of my features. I know for me personally, with these types of images, what I like to do is I like to set the remove blur to very low. So I want to keep some of the blur as I move up. And then when I do suppress noise, I want to suppress the noise, especially early on, um, because if you keep it, uh, if you introduce a lot of noise early, it's going to keep uh, getting noisier and noisier as the, as the image gets larger. And so at low res sizes, when you go from 128 to 256, it's pretty fast. Um, and again, when you go from 256 to 512, it's still going to be pretty fast. 
But then as you hit each uh, iteration, it gets slower and slower, right? And that's just because of processing time. Um, and I'll say, I'm not gonna hit the 4096 here. Um, I'm only gonna do this up to about 2048. But when you hit 4096, like it'll basically like crash your computer. Um, it'll move it to a grinding halt. So if you're watching TV or anything like while trying to do this, it's gonna like freeze up your computer. Um, and now that I'm hitting like 1024, I'm gonna add a little, I'm gonna try to reduce some of the blur and I might even introduce a little bit of noise. So because I know I wanna print these, um, it's really helpful to like have a little bit of noise because that helps an image sort of look nice when it's printed. Cool, so let's look at this one. Um, this looks pretty good to me. Uh, again, for printing purposes, I would go a little bit larger, um, but I kind of love how different colors get introduced into this model, right? So if we look at the very first size um, compared to the last one, like you can sort of see the blues in there, but it's it's getting highlighted as you iterate and loop through these things. You're also getting a little bit of orange. Um, these outlines have become like these sort of like almost cellophane looking things. Um, it's just a really interesting technique and something that I really like to do with these images. Um, so really quickly, I also want to just, uh, before we wrap up, I um, want to show some of the, the differences between a 128 model and a 512 model. Um, so most of the images on here are 128s, right? And so you can sort of see, like, you get these, like, really nice details. Um, you get that sort of cellophane-y look. Um, in some cases, I do have a couple in here that are 512. So this was generated from a 512. Uh, and you can sort of see, like, it keeps, it doesn't have as much of that, like, watercolor-y or cellophane look. Um, it actually looks pretty close to what was, you know, in the model when it was export. Um, yeah, so that's about it for this tutorial. Um, you can buy any of these images. Um, if you buy, an, buy one of these images from me, it helps support my work and it also helps uh, cover some of my server times because if you've ever done training on a GAN, you know, it can be pretty expensive and take a while. Um, so this is just a helpful little way to like help recoup some of my costs. Um, so cool, if you have any questions, leave me a comment um, and I'm happy to get back to you. Thanks.